All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this Monash Cybersecurity Seminar. So today, we are happy to welcome Arash Mirzai. And Arash received his, uh, his Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degrees in 2007 and 2009, respectively. He then worked in the cybersecurity field for about 10 years, uh, mostly working on analysis of symmetric key algorithms, design, on dif design of different types of cryptographic protocols, and design and evaluation of security architecture for different kinds of IT products and information systems. And after this 10-year uh, work, he started his PhD at Monash University, studying on layer two solutions to the scalability issues of blockchain. And he is still a PhD candidate at Monash University. And today he will talk to us about FPPW, FR and privacy preserving watchtower for Bitcoin. Thank you, Arish. Uh, the scene is yours. Uh, thanks, Ahmed, and thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to present our work. Uh, this the work was, uh, you know, accepted by Financial Crypto uh, 2021, and it's a joint work with Amin, Jiang, Sean, and uh, Ron. Uh, Do you want to share your screen, Arish? Oh, oh, sorry. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, all good, thanks. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, firstly, I uh, will provide a brief introduction to the concepts of payment channel and watchtower. Then some of the properties of the watchtower scheme, uh, including fairness, privacy, and coverage, will be uh, defined. And we will see that none of the existing watchtower schemes in the literature can provide both fairness and privacy at the same time. Um, watch the risks on Bitcoin actually cannot uh, provide fairness and privacy at the same time. Then uh, uh, an overview of our work, FVW, will be uh, presented. And we will see that uh, FVW uh, is able to achieve those two properties at the same time. Uh, uh, yeah, can I just ask you to move this? There is like a window that says optimize oh. microphone. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, that's great. Yeah, thanks. Okay, okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, you all know about um, scalability issue of Bitcoin, uh, and it, it, it has been a, a problem from the very beginning. Day. As you know, Bitcoin uh, throughput is up to six or uh, seven transactions per second, which is much lower than the figures for centralized payment systems such as Visa. This uh, problem has led to many uh, solutions. Uh, one of the promising ones is called payment channel, and this, uh, this whole watchtower thing uh, is related to this uh, you know, solution, this method of uh, solving this problem, the scalability problem, payment channel. Uh, but what is a payment channel? Uh, payment channel allows two uh, channel parties, two actually Bitcoin holders, for example, Alice and Bob, to uh, fund a two of two multi signature address on the blockchain. And by uh, sending these transactions on the blockchain, actually they open uh, their channel. After that, they perform several transactions uh, off the blockchain without uh, sending these uh, transactions on the ledger. And finally, one or both the channel parties can decide to close the channel. For doing so, they uh, send the latest channel state on the uh, blockchain. And after that, the channel has been closed uh, and, uh, you know, miners, or no one is aware of these you know, off-chain transactions. Uh, however, it's always possible that one of the channel parties, for example, Alice, to try to finalize the channel state using, the, using an old state in order to maximize her profit. And since the Bitcoin miners uh, are not aware about the, these, you know, and transactions, uh, it's possible that this old transaction is accepted by the miners and is added to the 
uh, blockchain. So there must be a way for Bob to prevent uh, his counterparty Alice from doing so. Uh, some of the important existing payment channels, such as uh, Lightning for uh, Lightning Network for Bitcoin or Ryden Network for Ethereum, are based on these assumptions that parties remain always online in order to uh, monitor the blockchain, detect misbehaviors by their counterparties, and react to those misbehaviors. However, uh, this assumption, this requirement, uh, would be difficult for norm for typical users to achieve. I mean, uh, most of the time, typical users go offline um, due to you know different reasons. Uh, to resolve uh, resolve this issue, there is an idea uh, that parties can delegate this whole task of you know, monitoring the thing to a third party called Watchtower. Then Watchtower is always online and on behalf of the uh, you know, hiring parties, they monitor the blockchain and react to misbehaviors from channel parties. Uh, how does a Watchtower work? Assume that we have a payment channel between Alice and Bob. And this uh, channel is in state five. And now we know that state one to state four are not supposed to be published on the Bitcoin network. Now Bob uh, wants to go offline for a while. Before going offline, he hires a watchtower. Uh, he gives the uh, you know states, the, the revoked state, the old states uh, to the watchtower as well as some evidence, and this watchtower is always online. Uh, now assume that Alice uh, broadcasts an old state, let's say state three on the blockchain, and uh, we know that the watchtower is always online. He is monitoring the Bitcoin network whenever this transaction is uh, seen by the watchtower on the ledger, since this you know, state uh, match matches with one of the state that uh, has been stored in Watchtower's database. He knows that something bad happened. The Watchtower knows that uh, some fraud has committed by some parties, and Watchtower reacts to this misbehavior by publishing the uh, corresponding evidence on the blockchain. And by doing so, for example, in Lightning Network. Uh, Alice loses all her funds in the channel and all the channel funds are given to Bob by broadcasting this evidence. In other words, the watchtower on behalf of the honest party, hiring party, Bob, react to misbehaviors done by uh, Alice in this scenario. Uh, this is, uh, this is the you know, general way uh, using which the watchtower works, but uh, there are several uh, watchtower schemes in the literature, for example, on Bitcoin. Each one of those, uh, you know, schemes, watchtower schemes, focus on some of the, some particular one or some particular properties. In the next few slides, I want to tell you a little bit about those properties that we have defined in the, you know, paper. Let's start with Watchtower fairness. There are some watchtower schemes, for example, for Bitcoin, called like uh, Monitor or DCWC, in which uh, the watchtower is uh, rewarded upon fraud, meaning that whenever some fraud is committed by these honest parties, the watchtower is supposed to react to those misbehavior, and just after that, you know, reaction, the honest watchtower is rewarded. The reward is result of that, you know, reaction, the result of uh, broadcast of that, you know, evidence that we saw in the previous uh, slide. However, it's, it's not fair because although the watchtower has been honest, although the watchtower has consumed, uh, you know, some resources in order to remain always online, uh, some resources in order to store some, you know, transactions and some evidence for the honest party. Uh, since the, both channel parties have been honest, we have no fraud, so the watchtower is rewarded with nothing. 
which is why we call such schemes unfair with respect to the watchtower. Uh, to, uh, so uh, we need two conditions uh, in order to have in, in order to achieve fairness with respect to the watchtower. Firstly, the honest watchtower must be rewarded with some non-zero amounts of coins. And secondly, if the watchtower has locked some collateral as part of the watching contract, uh, the watchtower, the honest watchtower must be able to redeem all her collateral once the watching contract terminates. And we will see that there are some schemes in which the watchtower must lock some coins. Here we are saying that for those schemes, watchtower must be able to, the honest watchtower must be able to redeem its collateral. And as I mentioned, the reward must be in some non-zero values. Let's continue with uh, channel party fairness. I define channel party fairness with two extreme cases. In the first case, assume that again, Alice and Bob has a channel. Uh, Bob's balance in the latest channel state is six coins, and uh, Bob has hired the watchtower. However, assume that Alice published an old state on the blockchain, Bob is offline, uh, watchtower is assumed to be, uh, is supposed to be, uh, you know, online, but is not, or for some reasons, uh, he's non-responsive. Then, and assume that, for example, there was a time uh, in there, there was a state, let's say state three, in which, uh, you know, Bob didn't have any fund in the channel. So state three is published by Alice. Watchtower is non responsive. The channel state is, uh, the channel actually gets finalized with state three. What does it mean? It means that since in state three, Bob didn't have any. Uh, fund in the channel, Bob has lost six coins in the channel. And uh, assume that for this watchtower scheme, watchtower uh, doesn't compensate any of, uh, you know, amount of coins that Bob has lost. Uh, so the watchtower guarantees nothing, which is why we say that such uh, scheme uh, is zero party fair or uh, you know it provides channel party zero fairness another extreme case uh, is when uh, exactly uh, assume them everything is exactly the same as the previous slide but here if bob uh, loses six coins in the channel uh, all these six coins uh, are compens compensated by the watchtower watchtower has been non-responsive, Bob has lost six coins in the channel, but Watchtower guarantees that all the Bob's loss is compensated by him. Such a scheme, we call, we call such a scheme uh, one party fair, or we say that such a scheme provide channel party one fairness. In order to in order to cover the cases in between, we parameterize uh, the definition of fairness using a, param using a parameter called alpha. What does it mean? It means that if Bob uh, loses six coins, Watchtower guarantees that alpha times six coins is uh, you know, given back to Bob as the compensation. Uh, and as I uh, mentioned, for example, uh, for zero fairness, there are uh, you know, some schemes such as uh, DCWC, Outpost, Monitor, in which uh, the, uh, the honest channel party, the, the hiring channel party might lose all his or her funds in the channel. Those schemes are called unfair or we, can, we say that they fail to, they, they provide zero, channel party zero fairness. On the other hand, there are some other schemes such as Cerberus in which uh, the watchtower locks some collateral uh, that is guaranteed to be given to the channel party. And since the collateral equals the channel capacity, uh, Bob, for example, in this scenario can be sure that 
he doesn't lose any funds in the channel. So we have some schemes uh, which can provide a channel party zero fairness or just simply provide fairness with respect to the channel party. And we have some other schemes that can provide channel party one fairness. Uh, another uh, relevant uh, you know, term that I want to talk about is coverage. Um, as, I, as I told you, there are some schemes, if we want to have fairness with respect to the hiring party, the watchtower is supposed to lock some collateral as part of the watching contract. But we know that the higher collateral, uh, the lower liquidity and the lower maximum total capacity of channels that can be covered by a watchtower. In order to parameterize uh, you know, those factors, we, def we have defined uh, coverage. What does it mean, this coverage? Assume that we have a channel between Alice and Bob whose capacity is X Bitcoin. In order to uh, monitor these channel for both channel parties, assume that the watchtower has to lock C coins uh, as part of this, you know, watching contract, then uh, coverage for such a scheme is defined as this, you know, fraction. X over C plus X is the coverage of these, uh, you know, watchtower schemes. And for example, for those schemes in which the watchtower is not required to lock any collateral, the value of the C, <clears throat> sorry, the value of the C equals zero, and the coverage for such schemes is one. On the other hand, for example, for, so, for those schemes such as Cerberus, in which uh, the, the watchtower has to lock some collateral, the value of the coverage, the value of beta, would be smaller than one. For example, in Cerberus, uh, if the watchtower is gonna be hired by both channel parties, uh, the collateral of the watchtower must be twice the channel capacity. So in this formula, C equals 2X and coverage for Cerberus, for example, is one over one third, actually one over three. Uh, another uh, concept that I wanna, another you know, property that, uh, of a watchtower scheme that I wanna talk about is privacy, privacy against, you know, watchtower. Uh, assume that in order to define this uh, property for, for a payment channel, I define a game. Assume that we have two payment channels. The first payment channel is between A and B. The second one is between A prime and B prime. Both channels have the same capacity, capacity of X is the same for both channels. Also, both channels have the same setup. What do I mean by setup? I mean that uh, in this, you know, uh, these are different channel states, state one to state N. By same setup, I mean that the initial and final state for both channels are the same. Uh, in other words, balance of A equals balance of A prime uh, in both first state and last state of the channel. We know that uh, these two states, I mean the first state as well as the last state are published on the blockchain, on the ledger, and everyone uh, knows about these two states, but what about state two to n minus one? And normally uh, we do not, I, I, actually the channel parties do not want to, you know, third parties to know about distribution of funds amongst them in these two states, state two to a state n minus one. Now assume that we select a random bit and based on the, uh, this random bit B, one of these two sets of data is selected and is given to a passive uh, probabilistic polynomial time adversary. Uh, 
And this adversary is supposed to guess whether these sets of data, input sets of data, has been selected from the first uh, channel <clears throat> or the second channel. And she wins the game if uh, her guess is correct. In, a, in other words, she wins the game if B equals B prime. Uh, we say that such a payment channel scheme provides privacy uh, if uh, probability of uh, winning the game uh, minus 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.5, sorry, is negligible. Uh, there are some schemes, for example, uh, in Cerberus, it's a watchtower schemes. In order to watch the payment channel for channel parties, all the commit transactions are given, must be given to the watchtower. What does it mean? It means that a uh, watchtower is able to know actually how funds are distributed amongst the channel parties to its uh, lifetime. So actually it's possible for a third party, including the watchtower, to win this game with uh, you know, non-negligible probability. However, there are some other uh, watchtower schemes, such as Monitor or DCWC, in which only the encrypted versions of the commit transactions are given to the watchtower. And if uh, both channel parties act honestly, those encrypted uh, commit transactions will not be decrypted uh, by the uh, watchtower. And so uh, it's impossible for Watchtower or any other third party to learn anything about distribution of funds amongst the channel parties. Uh, okay, now we have defined different properties that, the, that a Watchtower scheme actually can achieve or fail to achieve. And uh, we, I told you about, uh, you know, the, very shortly, I told you about uh, different schemes. For example, I told you that there are some schemes such as Monitor and DCWC, which fail to, uh, to provide fairness with respect to the watchtower, because the honest watchtower is possible to be rewarded with nothing. There are some schemes such as monitor DCWC and outpost which fail to provide uh, fairness with respect to the hiring party. Uh, why? Because it's possible that the honest channel party loses all her or his funds in the channel. And there are some schemes such as Cerberus which fail to provide privacy. And there are some you know, schemes uh, such as PISA, failsafe or BRIC. These are watchtower schemes. These cannot be deployed on uh, cryptocurrencies with limited scripting languages, such as Bitcoin. Now I want to uh, introduce you know, our work, FPPW. But before that, uh, uh, I want to talk about those you know, properties. Uh, FPPW, unlike Cerberus, can provide privacy, meaning that Watchtower doesn't learn anything about the balance of channel parties in state two to state n minus one. Uh, unlike PISA, um, our work can be deployed on Bitcoin. Uh, it can provide channel party one fairness. However, its coverage is higher than the coverage of uh, PISA and Cerberus, those that can provide channel party one fairness. And finally, um, our scheme, uh, unlike monitor and DCWC, can provide watchtower fairness. Uh, before uh, telling you about uh, our, uh, you know, about how FVW works, I wanna tell you a little bit about adapter signature. It has been used in FPW. In adapter signature, we have a signer uh, here, Bob, for example, whose public key is known to, uh, you know, Alice. And Alice uh, generates a statement witness pair using a hard relation uh, to uh, simplify, uh, you know, the concept, assume that this capital Y and small y are public key and private key of, uh, you know, 
generated by Alice uh, using um, using a public key crypto uh, you know system. So capital Y is the public key, Y is the uh, private key. And the capital Y, uh, the statement, the public key is given to Bob, and Bob generates a press signature on a message M using its private key. And this press signature uh, is given to Alice, and its uh, you know, correctness can be verified by uh, Alice. Additionally, Alice is able to uh, transform this press signature to a valid signature on the message M by you know using its uh, witness and uh, other than that bob is also able to if this signature this is uh, if this valid signature is revealed to bob bob is also able to extract the value of the small y or witness uh, based on the value of the signature pre-signature and capital y statement uh, so uh, here Bob gives a pre-signature to Alice. Alice is able to adopt it and after that Bob is able to extract the uh, you know private value of the Alice if he knows the value of the signature in summary. Okay, let's start uh, with uh, let's continue with FVW. FVW like uh, other payment channels have a life cycle. Uh, life cycle of the FPW includes four phases. Uh, in the first phase, the channel must be established. Uh, we also have channel update in which the channel is updated. We have channel closure in which the channel is closed. We also have a phase called uh, abort channel. Uh, uh, phase abort using which the watchtower actually uh, can decide to uh, to withdraw its service. Okay, we will see how they work, but for now let's focus on uh, FPPW channel establishment. In the channel establishment, we have a uh, we have a funding transaction uh, using which Alice and Bob. Uh, fund a 12 to multi-signature address on the blockchain and fund this address by uh, A plus epsilon over two and B plus epsilon over two respectively. It's a funding transaction like the funding transaction of any other uh, channel. Uh, output of the funding transaction is spent uh, by the commit transaction and commit transaction has two outputs and I will tell you about those outputs, but before that, remember that this commit transaction is signed by uh, both channel parties using the adopter signature. And the adopter signature that I told you about is used to sign this commit transaction. Uh, so, uh, in other words, whenever this commit transaction is published by Alice, for example, the witness value of Alice is revealed to Bob and vice versa. Uh, this commit transaction has two outputs. Uh, the first one is the main output. Uh, the second one is the auxiliary output. This auxiliary output actually is used for uh, punishment and revocation uh, purposes and I will tell you about this uh, you know, output later. Let's focus on this main output um, for now. This main output can be spent by a split transaction after small T rounds, let's say one day, for example. Uh, meaning that if this transaction is published by Alice, for example, Alice or Bob uh, can publish this split transaction after one day and after that this uh, the output of the split transaction actually represent the channel state uh, additionally we have a collateral transaction using which the watch watchtower that is going to be hired by alice and bob uh, lock some collateral in this output and the, the value of the collateral equals the channel capacity, I mean, equals A plus B 
B. Also, the watchtower has a reclaim transaction. Uh, and whenever the watchtower decides to withdraw its service, uh, he can uh, broadcast this reclaim transaction on the blockchain. And the output of the reclaim transaction can be claimed by the watchtower after capital T rounds. Capital T is uh, capital T rounds assume that is equivalent to one month. Additionally, we assume that channel parties uh, are supposed to get online almost once per month, which is not a big deal for uh, typical users. A normal users, uh, you know, can get online once per month. Uh, and uh, yeah, pretty that's it. Uh, after at the end of the channel establishment phase, these funding transaction as well as these collateral transactions are published on the blockchain. After that, uh, the uh, channel parties can update their channel. How? Assume that the channel now is in state I and channel parties wants to update the channel from state I to I plus one. To do so, firstly, uh, clearly a new version of commit transaction and split transactions are uh, agreed between the channel parties. Then uh, clearly uh, it, it, this would be the you know, latest channel state, but uh, the previous state, state I must be revoked. Why? Because uh, otherwise, uh, it would be uh, possible for Alice or Bob to publish the latest um, state I on the blockchain and close it by state I. Uh, to revoke uh, this state, state I, uh, a revocation transaction is uh, signed by all the channel participants. And uh, this revocation transaction can be published uh, immediately. And whenever this revocation transaction is published, its output uh, can be claimed by someone who knows both uh, witness values of Alice and Bob. Let's say, for example, if Alice, uh, you know, pu published this commit transaction, for example, on the blockchain, Bob know, can learn, can compute the witness value of Alice, and he knows his own witness value and only Bob who knows both witness values can uh, you know, claim this output. And this revocation transaction is given to the watchtower. Okay, watchtower, uh, once watchtower sees this commit transaction can instantly publish this revocation transaction and the output of the revocation transaction can only be claimed by the honest party. We also have two versions of penalty transactions in the channel update. Uh, and these penalty transactions can be published after uh, one day since broadcast of this commit transaction and whose output, outputs of these penalty transactions can be uh, you know, claimed again by the honest party. For example, if Alice published this commit transaction, Bob has been honest and can claim these uh, you know, outputs. And something that is important is that all these three transactions uh, spend the auxiliary output of the commit transaction. So only one of these three transactions can be published on chain and output of uh, these three transactions can be claimed only by the honest channel party. Now assume that I will tell you about different scenarios later. For now, assume that you want, uh, the channel parties want to close the channel. They can simply publish the latest uh, commit and split transaction on the blockchain. And by doing so, all the revocation and penalty transactions get invalid. Uh, and the fourth phase that I told you is called channel abort. Uh, in which, as I mentioned, the watchtower assumed that decides to withdraw its service. To withdraw its service, it's uh, published a reclaim transaction, and after one month, he can claim this, you know, output. But during this one month period, uh, he's uh, responsible to monitor the channel and react to misbehaviors. Uh, assume that uh, we have a dishonest channel party, but the watchtower is responsive. The dishonest channel party, let's say Alice, published the old 
commit transaction on the blockchain. However, we know that the, the main output of the commit transaction uh, it can be spent by split transaction after one month, uh, after one day, sorry. But the uh, watchtower has the opportunity to publish the revocation transaction immediately. And by doing so, uh, he can be sure that those penalty transactions get invalid and the honest party can claim the output of the reclaim transaction. But what if the, uh, you know, what, what if the honest, uh, the, the, the watchtower is non-responsive? If the watchtower is non-responsive, Alice is able to publish an old commit transaction. And uh, since the, higher, the, the other party, Bob, and also the watchtower are, uh, you know, offline, or non-responsive. After one day, uh, the output of the commit transaction is, uh, you know, spent using the split transaction, uh, and A has been able to finalize the channel state using an old state, state I, rather than state N, for example, when N with N being larger than I. Uh, now the honest channel party, which we know that uh, gets online almost once per month, uh, gets online and sees that, okay, the channel has been closed, the split transaction, all the split transaction has been, pub has been published on chain. However, uh, the honest channel party has a penalty transaction, the first version of the penalty transaction that can, you know, and uh, he uh, can publish it. And by doing so, all the collateral of the watchtower is given to the honest hiring party, Bob, here in this scenario. Uh, so uh, what if the watchtower has, uh, you know, published the reclaim transaction, you know, earlier? In that case, we know that uh, the, the dishonest channel party can publish commit and old commit and old split transaction on the blockchain. And since the uh, output of the collateral transaction has been spent, the first version of the penalty transaction cannot be uh, spent anymore. However, the honest channel party has still a second version of the penalty transaction by broadcasting, which he can. Uh, he can take all the collateral of the uh, washed over. Uh, yeah, that's that's how the uh, you know we, we we could cover all the possible scenarios, all the possible scenarios in which uh, either one of the channel parties or the uh, watched over are uh, dishonest. And uh, in the paper, actually, we prove that based on those definitions that I uh, told you about, uh, we proved that uh, FPPW provides channel party al uh, alpha fairness with alpha being one, which means that it's impossible that a, that a, a honest channel party loses any funds in the channel. Why? Because in all scenarios, uh, the honest channel party can uh, you know, can earn A plus P plus Epsilon if the watchtower is responsive or C plus Epsilon. And C, since the value of the collateral C equals A plus P, in all scenarios, it's impossible for the honest channel party to lose any fund in the channel. We also prove that watchtower, uh, this scheme can provide watchtower fairness why? Because we assume that after each, after the channel establishment and each uh, channel update, the watchtower is rewarded, uh, which results uh, in the, uh, which results, uh, which causes that the uh, watchtower is rewarded in all scenarios. And also based on those award phase that I told you, uh, always, all the time, the watchtower has the chance to mm, mm, unlock its collateral after that after you know the channel uh, monitoring uh, contract terminates we also proved that the uh, fvw provides 
balance um, privacy based on that you know game and uh, you know uh, definition that I told you. Why? Because uh, the only transaction in these trans in these transactions, the only transaction that have some information about distribution of funds amongst the stranded party is the split transaction, and this split transaction is not given to any third party, including including the watchtower. Watchtower knows about these other you know transactions, but the amount of all these outputs are fixed per channel doesn't change change from one state to to the next and since in uh, in that game we assume that the both channel channel between a and b and channel between a prime and b prime have the same channel capacity and the same channel setup uh, it's impossible for any adversary including the watchtower to learn anything about uh, distribution of funds and finally uh, since the value of the collateral equals the channel capacity in that formula that uh, I told you, the value of C equals X and the value of beta uh, would be 0 0.5. Uh, 0 .5. Uh, and these are you know, different references that uh, you know, I told you about or uh, different you know, uh, watchtower schemes, monitor, disability and all other uh, watchtower schemes that I told you about. And, uh, you know, that's it. Uh, thank you for, you know, uh, listening to my presentation and I would be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Paras. No. Um, I have a question, but let's start with the audience. Does anyone have any questions for Arash? You may also use chat if you want to type your question. Uh, yeah, let, let me then begin. So you mentioned that collateral is equal to the capacity of the channel, right? Mm -hmm. uh, isn't this, I don't know, I'm not really familiar with this literature, but isn't this very kind of strong? Because let's suppose if I create a channel with you and I want to put in, I don't know, a lot of money into the channel, then the watchtower will also be able to get that much money. So I want to do, let's say, business with you, and I put, I don't know, thousands of dollars into the channel. But I also need to pay that much money to the watchtower as well, right? Uh, you don't pay that much money to the watchtower, but watchtower, the only thing that you give to the watchtower is some reward per channel update. Okay, let's say for every time that you update your channel, you give some reward to the watchtower. But the collateral of the watchtower equals the channel capacity, meaning that the watchtower must have uh, that amount of you know, money to log mm -hmm. for your channel, for that particular mm -hmm. channel. So the watchtower must be rich. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it's one of the drawbacks of the, uh, those fair uh, watchtower schemes. Mm -hmm. uh, th there nice. are some schemes in which, as I, as I told you, there, there are some schemes in which the watchtower locks nothing. Mm -hmm. But in those schemes, uh, how can a hiring party be sure that the watchtower is responsive? What, mm -hmm. if, the, what, what if watchtower tells that, okay, uh, you, you can be sure that I'm responsive, but is this honest or its service is uh, you know, not good enough? And in, in that scenario, the, the hiring party uh, might lose all her funds. So here, actually, there's a uh, you know, trade off between uh, that fairness or that coverage that I told you about. This mm -hmm. uh, issue that you are mentioning is related to coverage. Mm -hmm. The higher collateral uh, locked per channel, the lower mm -hmm. liquidity and the lower, you know, ability for a watchtower to watch, uh, you know, as many payment channels as it desires. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if the watchtower says that he wants to get his money, 
So how much does it get with respect to your notation? Was it epsilon that he gets the money? Uh, in, in which scenario? In, in, yeah, in this one. If the watchtower wants to get the money, how much money does he get? Does it, is it epsilon or? Uh, if the watchtower wants to withdraw its service, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, no, no. Uh, it's not depending on the, it's not related to epsilon. Epsilon, as I told you, is here just because we need an output here. And epsilon is, let's say, is one Satoshi, is the minimum possible values that Bitcoin can support. Okay, uh, the reward that we give to the bit uh, the, to the watchtower is you know somewhere else. We, uh, pay, okay. for example, uh, using uh, you know uh, by cash or you know in some you know other cases. It's independent of this channel that we have here. Ah, uh, okay. So the, the watchtower gets paid elsewhere, yeah. not in this picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Paper update. Uh, it's gets rewarded, although uh, by making this scheme very more complicated, we can merge uh, mm -hmm. you know, these two mechanisms with each other, but uh, it makes the, you know, the whole system uh, more complicated and less efficient. Yeah, 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 I see. Okay. Actually, we can uh, generate a a payment channel between watchtower and the you know channel parties a one-way actually payment channel between the hiring parties and the watchtower and uh, with every update that you know channel is also updated mm -hmm. okay yeah. all right um does anyone else have any questions Mm -hmm. right. uh, it seems not. Yeah, in that case, thank you very much, Arash, for your interesting talk. My pleasure. Uh, That's my pleasure. Thank you again, everyone, for tuning in. So, we thank hope you. We hope thank to see you. everyone in the next seminar. Thank you. Sure. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and it was my pleasure. Thank you. See you. See you. Bye.